title of the message is Healing of Your Finances. Financial healing. Okay? God loves you. It's his will to heal. It's his will to deliver. And it's his will that you prosper financially. God is not poor. You are a child of God. You are an inheritor of the kingdom of heaven. All the riches of heaven are yours. You are prospered in Christ. No matter what's going on in the financial world, your financial world. So we're going to go deeper and I believe the word of God's going to cut and that'll be good for you. Amen. Are we ready? I believe the word of God will cut and it'll be good for us. Praise God. So 3 John 1, 2, beloved, I pray, you probably all know it. 3 John 1, 2, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So financial health comes is a product of soul health. If your soul is healthy, it will affect your finances big time. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Most people who have financial woes and problems, it comes from the soul. Money is spiritual. Hello? Money is not just physical. Jesus did a lot of teaching about money. In the spiritual realm, you'd be surprised at what goes on with money. God can supernaturally bless you financially. And also demons can actually physically steal money. Money is a spiritual tool. It's a spiritual tool. Are you with me? God can touch your finances and cause them to prosper. And someone who is demonized, one of the things that the demons may do is rob that person, stop them from having any financial success, hinder them from in their finances, and so they just can't move forward in their business. Nothing ever works. Money is a tool. It can be a tool of God or it can be a tool of the enemy. So your heart is very important. The, your spiritual place, your spirit, your heart is very important. It's the place prosperity begins in Christ. I've told my story when I lost the family, lost the marriage, lost the house, I lost the furniture, I lost everything. And then I came to a realisation that to be blessed is in the heart. If you are in Christ, you are blessed. And out of that revelation, I recovered that I am blessed in Christ, no, what, no matter what the devil tries to do. All right? So, you know Psalm 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's your provider. You, you, you need to understand that we have a rich and generous God. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So faith in the financial comes from a realisation that God is good, God is rich and God is generous. Amen? It's the same with healing. You've got to realise that by his stripes you are healed. You've got to understand that God is a healer, that Jesus is your healer. You've got to absolutely believe that no matter what you see. 
I remember a young man, missionary in Singapore, had gone to sleep in the mission apartment, apartment that was for missionaries, had left the LPG gas on. And he came for prayer, had no muscular control. His arms were all over the place. And I'm like, oh, God. But you have to believe that Jesus Christ is the healer. And God healed that man despite what I was looking at. No matter what your financial problems are, no matter what the poverty, some people here are doing well financially, but but there are people who are watching and you've got real financial problems, debt and so on. You have to believe in your heart that God is your provider. He is my shepherd and I shall not want. Everyone say, he is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yeah, sometimes people give financial talks because actually they want to receive. I'm not doing this to receive because my father is my giver. Amen. I'm doing this to help you. I'm just telling you the word of God, that the Lord is your shepherd and he'll take care of you. And uh, as Ashley was talking about how he multiplies five loaves and two fish. He's a God who supernaturally does things, supernaturally does things. See, when you are in God's will, as Ashley was talking, how God called her and how God provided, when the Lord called me, he gave me the grace to do what I'm doing. He provided to do this, to fly with the team all over the world and not have any expectation from man but put my expectation in him and he provides. So God is a supernatural multiplier of loaves and fish. He will multiply in your life. Just believe him. Just trust him. If you're in his will, he will provide. It is a natural law. It's a spiritual law. If you're in his will, he'll provide. Where he guides, he supplies. Hallelujah. And God, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, is able. Everyone say, is able. able. You know, when Satan puts something on you like debt or something, he'll also put on you, try to put on you that this thing is permanent, that nothing will move it, you know. People who suffer depression can feel like they'll never get free of it. It's a lie of the enemy. Poverty in itself is a lie. And people can have a poverty mentality. They always believe that this is how it's going to be. They're always going to be in lack. They'll never get out of it. It's a lie of the enemy. Poverty mentality always lacks vision and faith. Always lacks vision and faith. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. And the primary meaning of grace in the New Testament is God's power to those who can't help themselves. God's power to the sinner who can't help himself. God's power to someone who's in financial need, who can't see a way out. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Turn to your neighbour and say, you. God is able. Tell your neighbour, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. And turn to your neighbour and say, that you, having all sufficiency... In all things. That means all. Amen. May have an abundance for every good work. As is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now, may he who supplies seed to the sower, seed to the sower, 
and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. So while you're sowing, whatever God has given you, he's multiplying that seed. Okay? When you, when you sow whatever it is in the kingdom of God, finances or whatever, you're believing that that seed is being multiplied in its effect. While you are enriched in everything. What for? For all liberality. Amen. A poor man is, struggles to be generous and give. So God enriches us so that we can be generous. Which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Amen. People give thanks and praise you. And praise God, sorry. And they thank you. Amen. So God will give us the kingdom of heaven. And in the kingdom of heaven, it, there's everything. Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers. And they were to declare the acceptable year of the Lord, God's divine provision. Hallelujah. The kingdom of heaven is ours. And the kingdom of heaven has everything, not like this earth. And then he says, sell what you have and give alms. That's helping the poor. Provide yourself, yourselves money bags which do not grow old, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches nor moth destroys. For where your treasure is... There your heart will be also. So we treasure Jesus. We treasure his kingdom. We treasure his gospel. These are the true treasures. Hallelujah. We set our heart on him who is above the invisible one. That's the true treasure. The world sets its heart to the most part on materialism. We travel the world and it's the same everywhere in the world. Just not, not just Americans, everyone. Uh, you know, and sometimes even more so in very poor countries. Money becomes everything. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Turn to your neighbor and say, Where's your treasure? Where's your mind? So put your faith in Jesus Christ. When Jesus multiplied the five loaves and two fish, he looked up and blessed. He was looking to his father for the provision, for the miracle. Look up. Don't look to man for anything. If you put your expectation on people, it causes all sorts of problems. You begin to relate to them because of what they can give you. That's unhealthy because we're supposed to love one another, not what we can get out of people. With, with, with GEM ministry, because we, we have many volunteers and people and stuff, you're free to come, you're free to go. Like... We're not dependent on you. Amen? Amen? You're free and we're free. And that's healthy. Yes. Amen? We're not trying to manipulate people or whatever. We're just putting our, our eyes on the Lord. Look up. Jesus didn't look to man to multiply loaves and fish. He, did, he didn't try to find a business financial partner to provide for the crowds. Hallelujah. He just trusted his father. Praise God. And my God shall supply all of your... Do you notice there's a lot of all in this? That means everything. All of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to God, our Father, be glory forever and ever. Amen. So Jesus... When he sent his disciples, he told them, take no money bag, no extra tunic, 
know this, know that. And he wanted to teach them to depend upon God. A healthy financial life comes from depending on God. Don't look to the government. Some people call the government uncle. Uncle's going to provide for me. I'm going to take a holiday on the government. I'm going to, the government is going to provide me with this pension. That's, that's poverty. Look to God. He is your provider. Amen? Poverty mentality is a dependency mentality. A dependency mentality. You're in your problem and you're dependent on someone else. Praise God. Many years ago, my dear mother, I love her very much, but she used to tell us that we're not a rich family, we're a poor family. So I always grew up knowing that we were poor, and we were. <laughs> I can remember looking under the sofa for, 50, for, for a few cents, you know. And then one day, God took me in a vision, in, in a dream, into the treasury room of heaven. And he said, this is full of gold. And he said, this is all yours. And then I realized I was rich. It's all yours, the love, the joy, the peace, the riches of heaven. You're rich. And some of you don't know how big your bank account is. Hello? How can you say you're poor when you're actually rich? There's no children of God who are poor. You are rich in Christ Jesus. Paul, when he was in prison and lacking his, his coat, his garment and his scrolls and so on, he was rich in prison. No one can take it away from you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So money, the flesh and spiritual warfare. Shall we go there? You can be led by the Holy Spirit with your finances or you can be controlled by your fleshly desires. Hello? I'm talking to Christians as well. You can be led by the Holy Spirit. You can walk in the Spirit with your finances or you can be controlled by the flesh. And the flesh is impromptu spending. And sometimes we have people who come and they want to be delivered of shopping, comfort shopping and so on. And they get prayed for and they come back and they're like content. Satan will tempt a person to use their money to ruin their life. Oh, I need this beautiful house. But even though I haven't got the money, I can't afford it, I'm going to take out a mega loan to buy this house that I can't afford because I am pulled towards it. I need this beautiful place. And then you find your life is ruined with stress and anxiety because you can't pay the high interest on the mortgage. You with me? Satan has tempted you and brings ruin through it. The same with, you know, like, for example, if someone asks, you to become surety for them. I remember some, some friends many years ago, their parents asked them to be surety for them, guarantee, financial guarantors. But the parents lacked wisdom, according to the kids. The kids went, became you know, guarantors. The parents' business went bust because they lacked wisdom. And they lost everything. They went bankrupt. Be led by the Holy Spirit. The Lord will give you wisdom. Amen. Pray over your finance because your finance is in the spiritual realm. It can be attacked by demons or it can be blessed by God. Pray over your finances. Psalm 
your money can be used simply to fulfill your fleshly desires. Okay? Like, but, but the Christian is to have this spirit of contentment. But the flesh, I've got to have this, I've got to have this. And that's what they do advertising, marketing. If anyone's in marketing, God bless you. <laughs> but marketing, much of marketing is to manipulate your flesh, you know. Like in Sydney, for example, our water is good water. It's quality drinking water that comes out of a tap. But somehow, years ago, someone did some marketing and now everyone's buying bottled water. And the water out of a tap tastes good and is quality water for drinking. Why do you want to... But you go to people's places and they got all this bottled water. What for? When I was a kid, I grew up drinking tap water and I wasn't sick. But someone manipulated everyone into thinking that it's not good enough, you'll get sick or something. Money can be used as an expression of your pride. I've got to have this house because my neighbours. I've got to have this car because someone else has got this car. I've got to have these accessories, these shoes, this purse or this suit or whatever it is because it's pride. It's pride. Just be content. Amen? Don't go beyond with your financial spending. Don't go beyond with what you have. It's not God's will that you be in debt. Years ago, I remember the government saying that Debt is good. How crazy is that? Read your Bible. The person who is in debt is the servant of the lender. He's the tail and not the head. So your flesh will want things that you can't afford and the devil is happy for you to buy the things you can't afford. And then you realise a little bit later that you couldn't afford it, but now you've got it and you're trying to offload it. So John the Baptist in Luke 3.14 says, it says that the soldiers asked John the Baptist saying, and what shall we do? And he said to them, do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely and be content with your wages. You know, so many people are trying to climb the ladder they're trying to be prosperous like everyone else. You know what I mean? And it's never ending. It's never and and people in the world who are rich are very often not happy. So there is joy in contentment. Everyone say there is joy in being content. Turn to your neighbor and say, Are you content? Hallelujah. So uh, this may come as a surprise to some people, but God primarily provides in our lives by us working. By us working. 2 Thessalonians 3.10 When we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such, we command, wow, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. Praise God. Praise God. So God will bless your diligence. Some people are lacking in their life because they're lazy. Amen. You apply yourself to what God has given you and he will bless and he will provide. Hallelujah. The little you have, be a good steward of it. I was talking to someone and there was an inheritance and it wasn't very much and they said, well, and they went out and just spent it. It's not very much. We just blew it. 
And then years later, they're like, I'm lacking. Well, look what you did. Be a good steward of the little. In the kingdom of heaven, God is very focused on the little. When he gives you something small, be faithful with it. You don't say, well, it's only this amount. I'll just, I'll just do this. Be faithful in the little and he will give you more. Some people, they want more, but they're not faithful in the little. Anyone hear me? So the woman with the little bit of flour and oil, the widow of Zarephath, she was using that, preparing it, so that she and her son would die. She didn't see that with the little, God could supply for herself, her son, and the prophet Elijah for many days. You may not see the little that you have can do great things. If you, if you offer it in God, to God in faith, we had a testimony of a lady in London. She was unemployed, unable to pay her mortgage, her loan on the house, young lady, and she had the equivalent of about a, uh, 50 US dollars left in the bank account. And so she took the little that she had, plus more that she didn't have, and she gave it all away to three charities. When she did that, we have a testimony, she met, about a week later she had a good job, just a job that she wanted. She took the little like the widow's might and put it into the kingdom. Amen? Don't squander the little because you might be squandering your future. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, you know God gave Joseph a national saving plan. And uh, the Western countries, the US, Australia, we could do with a national saving plan instead of a national spending plan. Amen? Amen? Hello? Do you have a personal saving plan or is it only a spending plan? Hello? You'll never save money if you don't have a plan to save. And so Joseph uh, interpreted the dream of Pharaoh. Pharaoh had this dream that there'd be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. So God gave Joseph the interpretation of the dream and also the wisdom that you should save 20% during the years of prosperity to provide for the seven years of drought and famine. In the West, on the whole, we are experiencing years of prosperity. But the incredible thing is our governments are spending everything and going deeper and deeper in debt. It's stupid. They should go back to the Old Testament and see how God gave them a plan to save and it provided for the time of crisis. In this world, you will have trouble. So prepare for the days of trouble. Hallelujah. So your flesh wants to be satisfied, but it's good for you to deny the flesh. Be led by the Holy Spirit. And who believes in God here? Right. Well, we need to act like we believe in God. How do we do that? Well, spend time with him because you believe that he exists and that he honours your prayer life. Honour the Lord with the first, with your increase, with Proverbs 3, 8, I think it is, or 3.15. 3, Honour the Lord with your tithes, with your giving. Because you believe that he exists, you honour him and he will honour you and prosper you. 
An unbelieving Christian does not believe in giving. Well, because they don't see the point, because they don't believe that God really exists and he, that he will see the giving that you're doing in the kingdom and bless you. You with me? Well, I want to finish with Genesis 26, verse 1. It's Isaac. And the Lord says to Isaac, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I shall tell you. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. So Isaac obeyed the Lord and did not go down into Egypt. If you will do what the Lord says, you can enter into his supernatural blessing. So Isaac sowed in that land, the land that God told him to stay in. And he reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the Lord blessed him. The man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very prosperous for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. And the Philistines envied him. Amen. So if you go your own way in disobedience to the Lord, the Lord's favour will not be upon you. But if you obey the Lord and do what he says, you go to that land that he says and you sow in that land, you will reap in that land. It's simple. Just obey him. Praise God. When, when the Lord called me to Jem full time, I said, Lord, I've never done this before. I'm going to give up my job and going to do this. How, how am I going to do it financially? And the instructions the Lord gave me personally were look after your parents financially and look after children in poverty. He told me how to give. So I obeyed the Lord and I reaped and he provided for the ministry. So it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. If you have a compassion towards the poor, it will open the heavens above you. If you are close-hearted and hardened towards the poor, it will close the heavens. It will be barren above you financially because God loves the poor. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless us all. Amen. Oh, I will.